I moved things around again in my studio and I thought I would show you what I did. So let's start with this corner of the room. We have the doorway into the studio and since my last vlog, I have added, oh well, no, my husband helped me add these two new paintings on the wall next to the initial koi piece that I made. And then over here we have my basically administration and sketching table. We have some preliminary sketches of the contemplation series that I'm working on. And on this side, we have some of the poetry that I've written over the years up on the wall. The bag over here has my um, coloring pencils, coloring book, color, um, sorry, art journal and whatnot that I can just grab and go out and about town with. Um, and yeah. And then over here, we have my color chart um, sort of work in progress. I'll bring you in closer. There, much better. So here we have um, the different color combinations that I've been working on. Um, basically like my recipe for the different color hues that I use in my work. Um, it's definitely a work in progress. So many blank spaces all around. Um, but let me bring you even closer. And as you can see here, I mixed titanium white with permanent green light to get this particular shade of green. And I've done this with a lot of the other colors. And then like over here, I mixed cerulean blue chromium with titanium white to get this particular hue of blue. And then over here, if I add more titanium white, this particular blue will pop out, things like that. And in this corner of the room, we have my painting setup. As you can see, it's very compacted into this corner because it used to be half of the room. But um, with my pottery passion basically growing, um, I've compacted all my painting um, tools and materials into this corner right here. And yeah, basically the essentials, well, I, the, a maximalist, would deem essentials. Um, my easel here, paints um, over here and there on my shoe rack shelving system with yeah my brushes, paint pens, painter's tape, pens and whatnot, um, canvas, paper, basically all that I need, all shoved into one little corner. And I can love it more. I love this setup more. It's functional. Some people think that there's not much of a flow in terms of zen wise, but I think, well, I feel that it works better for me in this setup. We shall see once the pottery wheel comes in and the kiln comes in how that will work out. But I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. And this is my pottery corner. As you can see, it has grown because now it's taking up half the room. This side will be more of the hand building painting. I'm hoping to add on a pottery wheel right here. Um, hopefully in a month or two, but we shall see how the financial side of things work it out. Um, but yeah, I like uh, initially, if you remember in my last vlog, I had this table against the wall right here, but I moved it back into the middle of the room just because um, I like how I can utilize this middle table for both my painting side and my pottery side. And sometimes the lighting in this room isn't that great, um, so I have another lamp. Um, over here when I'm painting and also when I'm working on my pottery stuff I can share this same lamp so that's why the lamp is in the middle of the room as well um, what else so a closer look at the pottery side of things. Over here I have some bags of clay and some other random stuff that I have yet to unpack. And then we have pails over there for the reclaimed clay that I'll be, look, I'll be basically um, producing I guess. 
and then over here we have more clay um, some wedging boards on top of the container um, a wedging um, plaster board right there here in the pigeonhole uh, shelving system there's nothing to do with pottery right there whoops let's refocus nothing to do with pottery um, but the ones on top right there those are some pottery tools and essentials that I need like sponges and whatnot let me bring you in closer so on this side of the shelf, we have the essentials that I'll be using or reaching for quite often like carving tools, the shimpo bending wheel, which I love and then some sponges and whatnot Over here, we have um, a shelf filled with other pottery stuff for example, um, plastic bags to cover my pieces when they are drying a rolling pin, more sponges, uh, sanding paper, and a weighing balance with a few of the other knickknacks that um, has nothing to do with pottery but it's still fun to have like my sewing materials, oh, sorry, tools, sewing tools and then this is filled with stamps I just like to have them here just because it looks really nice um, over here and then a gift from a friend um, so cute and then my plant that's still surviving so these are some of the pieces that I've made so far like these are the ones I've started off with um, as you can see they're really small just because I was working with a one pound ball of clay or two pounds ball of clay and as you go up here these were like three pounds four pounds I think that vase right here was like six pounds I can't remember um, but yeah let me give you a closer look like this was my first ever piece that I did when I was going for uh, just one lesson to try out if I loved making um, pottery or it was something that I wanted to do in my future because in my mind I knew that well for years I was like okay I want to try pottery that seems like a medium that would excite me and that would suit me very well because I love sculpting um, and whatnot so um, this was my first class where I did this and this piece um, and that's how I got hooked I fell in love with pottery when I made these two pieces first ever pieces and then these are some of the other first few that I did for an eight week course that I did for pottery making, like an eight week beginners course. I painted a koi piece, which is like kind of my signature in the past, like I have over there. And then I thought I'll do a textured, I can't, a textured. Um, rose piece Ooh, let's focus shall we I don't know if you can see the texture on it but yeah a little rose piece right here that's supposed to be a plate or a saucer um, but I made it with like a one pound or two pound ball so not very big because clay does shrink as it dries um, and then this little mug right here that I did with another mug right here that I thought would be fun Ooh. and then we have upgraded to a little um, what do you call it pouring jug whatever you want to call it <laughs> I'm so bad with names but yeah all these were came out really nice there is a little crack on this side where I attach the handle so that's something I'm working on um, in terms of my skill and a little vase I'm lucky that most of my pieces didn't crack because um, sometimes with pottery you can do everything right but somehow a crack would pop up from for various reasons um, before after firing so yeah some of them you can fix some of them you can't which is great for my perfectionist nature because I have to work on that 
accepting flaws you know like this one it cracked big time this little vase right here it's so bad um, but I did everything that I'm supposed to do um, in terms of compressing the clay making sure it's not too thin um, but still there's a crack for I don't know what reason but that's all part and parcel of pottery like there's a million and one ways that you could possibly break or crack your piece um, even if you did everything right uh, it's really hard to pinpoint what went wrong and that's something that is great for my perfectionist nature like to accept things that aren't positive in a way that neutralizes it you know um and here we have another little bowl that i painted a sun on is this one is a um, brown speckled clay um i'm not the biggest fan of the speckled um clay i like white clay better just because colors really show off well on this white clay so and you know me with colors i love colors but yeah the speckled clay though some people really love the effect of seeing these speckles shine through the colors um but yeah it's not for me this could be a candle holder i don't know but yeah those are the ones i've painted so far and if we move on upwards you will see the ones that are yet to be painted because i'm waiting um to invest in a series of glazes that i love but we shall see when that will happen again financially need some planning and now for a closer look this is a vase i did with more than two pounds i think maybe it was three or four pounds um and i've yet to paint it but i'm excited to um most likely it's gonna be shades of pink and reds kind of like a pomegranate i don't know we shall see when the time comes um another vase a little smaller um but yeah cute and here we have another vase tall neck as you can see here i think i chipped it um somewhere along the line um but it can be sanded down there's a slight crack here it can be sanded down um which i will do but yeah we shall see how well i can patch that crack up but we shall see again my perfectionist nature is being tested whenever i make something new <laughs> and then this is like a little i don't know what you want to call it but container with a little lid i wanted to do a little knob like a you know to for the cover but um in the end, I didn't do it for some reason. I can't remember. And that's that. And then we have a bigger bowl. This is the first bowl that I made that I actually love and kept. All the other bowls that I made weren't um, good enough for me, I guess. <laughs> ah, but yeah, I love this bowl. And then we have this very heavy vase. Um, I definitely could have made the walls and the base thinner um, but I'm just so glad that it didn't crack <laughs> in the process um, because the thicker your walls are there's a higher chance of cracking just because there's a chance it didn't fully dry before you put it in the kiln um, but yeah I'm, I'm glad it didn't crack Again, that was like one reason out of many reasons why a piece would crack, okay? So, yeah. So, uh, I'm excited to paint this one. I'm going to put some... Um, I'm possibly going to use this for my... Like a holder for my metal straws and, you know, some other knickknacks in my kitchen. But we shall see. And on this half of the pottery corner of the room i have um plans to add a pottery kiln right here 
Um, but that's going to be like two to three years into the future. If it's less, I hope, then that'll be great. But financially, it's so expensive to have a pottery kiln because you have to get an electrician. You have, I mean, the kiln itself would cost me at least like 3,000, 3,005 maybe even 4,000 with all the equipment that a kiln needs so it's definitely set an investment way in the future but who knows who knows we'll see so that is all for my art studio update i hope you guys enjoyed it and i will see you in the next video bye